Um, before we, there we go. Okay. Uh, before we launch into our uh, message for today, I would like to um, read, uh, say a prayer, and uh, in that prayer, I want to uh, remember someone that who uh, asked us to as to mention uh, her son. Her name is Carol Burke. You know her. She comes here every Sabbath. Um, our sister Carol, she's not here with us because uh, her son uh, was involved in a motorcycle accident. And so um, she, she sent us an email and, and uh, uh, I was in, in, in their house uh, yesterday and uh, they, um, Kevin has, Kevin her, is Russell's younger brother. He, he's got two broken wrists, and uh, his right leg is also uh, broken, and it's fractured in so many places, and so it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a condition, and it's going to take him a while to recover. So this is what uh, Carol um, shared with us. She says, as you have heard, Kevin was involved in a motorcycle accident. He was traveling northbound on a country road when oncoming traffic an SUV made a quick left turn and struck Kevin broadside, sending Kevin flying off his bike to land on the ground 15, 20 feet away from his bike. God was watching over Kevin and at the time didn't let him break his neck, back, or pelvis. All very good. Although Kevin was knocked out upon impact, he wasn't severely hurt. Kevin did receive a broken nose, bruised heart, bruised right. His lung collapsed and broken both wrists left lower leg shattered, both bones, bones broken and at the ankle. Kevin was deemed to be trauma and got a helicopter ride to IU Methodist Trauma Center on Sunday afternoon uh, to Indianapolis. God was watching over Kevin while Kevin went to, into surgery too. The leg doctor came into Kevin's room, saw that his leg was quite swollen, making his surgery more urgent. The doctor took Kevin back, and I hadn't signed another form allowing them to release the pressure from it, being that it was so swollen, not a good thing. When the doctor got around to unwrapping Kevin's leg, God's miracle appeared. The leg was not swollen. The doctor took out his tape measures, checked his leg, and it was still soft and normal. The doctor couldn't believe it. He went to get his partner doctor to confirm the same. No swelling. Both surgeries on both days went well. I praise God, thank God, that every time I look at Kevin, Kevin is not allowed to be left alone for the next uh, three, four weeks. So I will be having church family with uh, 3 a.m. <laughs> God has been watching over Kevin, and I thank you for all your prayers. Please continue to pray for his recovery, my family. Thank you, everyone, your sister in Christ, Carol Burke. So... Um, you know he's he's a he's a very nice kid, and we had a prayer together yesterday. So um, why don't we pray one more time for him? Father in heaven, uh, we during this this difficult situations when uh, horrible things happen, such as an accident. Uh, from what I learned yesterday, this was. 100% fall of the of the uh, the driver of the car and, and, and not Kevin's, and so Father, but for some reason somehow uh, this happened, and so we praise your name because even in our difficult times, you told us to rejoice and to give you thanks and to give you all the honor and the glory, Father. We praise you for all the little miracles that occurred, how you preserved his life, how you have carried him and carried his entire family throughout this, this painful situation. We ask, Lord, that, uh, that he may learn from this, that he may, uh, his hope in you may be affirmed. And of course, we ask for Carol uh, as a mother, making so many decisions, making, having to, having to look after him, we ask for Russell and uh, having to be uh, a good older brother and taking care of him. Uh, I ask, Father, that you 
uh, will show us as a church how we can help. And of course, um, we ask, Father, that out of this accident, uh, you may be honored, that we may be drawn to you, and that uh, Kevin and his family may be drawn to you. Oh, Lord, uh, we ask now that as we delve in some moments in Holy Scripture, that you may guide us, that you may speak to us, that your Holy Spirit uh, will convict us, Lord. Uh, these are not the words of a man or a woman that we'll read, but these are the words of God. And so we ask, Lord, that uh, you will bless us at this time. In your name we pray. Amen. So some time ago, uh, probably more than a year ago, uh, Pastor Carmelo Mercado let me know uh, he's uh, one of our leaders here in the union. He let me know of a, uh, a health clinic that was going on near, uh, I think it was South Bend, probably. And so he said, you know, do you want to send a couple of people from your churches? Maybe they want to uh, learn about this. Maybe they want to, to see if this is something that they could do. And so... Uh, I knew that we have uh, uh, somebody who is in the medical field in our church, and so I, I texted uh, Lori, and I said, hey, Lori, do you want to go? It's in South Bend, was it, that, that, that you went with Sandy uh, a year ago? And so, um, yeah, so she went, they went, and they looked into what, what a health clinic was like. They, they, they accepted the call. I was surprised they went because it was quite a ways, and they, they saw what, it, what a health clinic was like. And so after that, uh, that's how our, uh, the dental clinic came about in our church, in our churches in the area. And as you know, uh, Lori and many others uh, have been working, worked really hard for that to happen along with leaders of the neighboring churches. Now, let me tell you a story, and, and, and Lori doesn't know this. On Thursday, uh, Dr. Randy Griffin came uh, over from Indianapolis bringing some of the glasses, the prescription glasses that have been uh, made for uh, some people. And so we were delivering them there at the church. People would come and pick them up. And, uh, and so there were, after I, we finished prayer meeting there in Hammond, uh, there were a few glasses left, probably five, ten glasses that, that hadn't been picked up. And so, you know, we, we said, well, let's, let's see, this is as far as we go. This is already 8.30. Let's go home. So we prayed, and uh, Dr. Randy left. Uh, Lori left. Everybody else was gone. And so uh, a couple of people and myself stayed talking there and uh, in the parking lot. And uh, somebody came in a car, and he said, hey, is this the Hammond Church? Uh, is this where we're supposed to pick up the glasses? And so we said yes. And you know, uh, Sister Dora Anita, uh, an elder from Hammond, was holding those glasses in her arms. And she was, she was like, okay, this is you. What's your name? Okay, here are your glasses. And he was so excited. Yay, this is the glasses. I could not afford these glasses. And this is like, you know, God works in mysterious ways. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. Thank you for doing this. And, and, and I'm so glad that and is this. And he looked at the sign. He was, is this a Seventh-day Adventist church? And, and we said, yes, 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 this is it. My, I grew up Seventh-day Adventist back in Jamaica. And my mom still a, a Seventh-day Adventist. She's 78 years old, and she's still going strong. She does everything herself. And, man, I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to tell her about this. And when do you have worship? And, you know, I told him, when did you used to have worship when you were growing up? Same time, I think. Same time, I think, you know, at uh, 9.30 we start with Sabbath school. It's like, oh, wow, yes, yes, I remember, I remember. I haven't been, you know, since I left Jamaica, I haven't been back in, in, in to a church, but I'm going to come back. Not the Sabbath, but the following. I'll be there. My wife and I will be there. And I was like, hey, if you come, there's, there's sometimes there's, you know, jerk uh, um, curry, you know, uh, 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 foods in our, because there's a few Jamaican people in our church, so we, you, you, you'll have a taste of Jamaica. It's like, oh, really? So, um, but I want you, it's, it's a wonderful little story, but what I want you to notice is that a couple of people heard the call of God. So when, when I, 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 I told um, Lori, hey, this is something we could do. 
And uh, Lori said, okay, we will accept this call. We will hear this call. This is something, they, she discerned that this was something from God and she went on with it. Now, more than a year later, this Jamaican gentleman might come back to church, might come to the Lord. So I want you to think about that. And I'm sure that's one story. And there are many more because someone hears the call of God. The call of God is important. The call of God is life-changing. The call of God can be disturbing. And uh, the call of God is, is, is something that it, it just, it changes you forever. Um, and it's missional. It involves all of you. And not only that, but it, it, it's, it involves your will, your surrendering of your will, of who you are. And so... Um, Can you hear me there? Okay. Now, I want you to... Um, Thank you, Brother Doug. Thank you so much. Okay, so please open your Bibles to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. I'm sorry, chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11. And uh, there is the description of Abraham. And I want to, I, I know we, we, I, I, we shared from this, this call of Abraham, uh, of God to Abraham, this call to Abraham to get out of his uh, his town, his land. And it is a very, um, we looked at the fact that we cannot depend on the circumstances. He, he left his household not knowing where he went. He didn't ask God, well, I'll, go at, I'll get out if you show me where, if you tell me where we're going. I can't be out in the dark. You need to show me, God. He just went out, not trusting the circumstances, but trusting God. And so now, let me uh, let us spend a few minutes um, on Hebrews 11, verse 8, where God calls Abraham. And uh, we will look at the call of God. What is it? What, what does it imply? What does it tell us? What's the nature of that call of God? And, and of course... What does it do to us? And, and more importantly, how can we receive God's call? Um, so it says, verse 8, <clears throat> By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place, place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. So we will look at the call of God First of all, that is necessary, that it is gracious, that it is personal, and that it is missional. So, number one, um, the call of God is gracious, is, is, is necessary. So, I, I have to confess, every time I have spoken about the, the call, the, the, this, this call of Abraham, and most, most times that uh, people talk about uh, Genesis 12. If you, you can go there, Genesis 12. Uh, open your Bibles, please, to Genesis 12. Oftentimes, we start with this in Genesis 12, verse 1, where, where the, the call of God comes to Abraham. However, um, if you notice, it starts a few verses before. And in fact, this starts way before. So notice in verse 27, verse 11, jump up a few verses to verse, uh, verses 27 of Genesis, Genesis 11, 27. It starts telling us about Abraham's father, Abram's father. And Abram, and it says, this is the genealogy of Terah. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Haran begot Lot. 
Remember his nephew Lot? Yeah, all right. So Haran died before his father Terah in his native land in Ur of the Chaldeans. Then Abram and Nahor took wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Ixcah. But Sarah was barren, she had no child. And Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and they went out with them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. But then listen to what happened. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. So the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. That's the end of the story of Terah. So they received, they received a call to get out of their land, get out of Ur. But what happened? They got to a place that they thought, oh, this is, Haran is pretty nice. This is okie dokie. I mean, it's not Canaan, but at least we're getting somewhere. And what do we hear? They dwelt there. Now, it is interesting to note uh, when, do you remember Seth? It is the firstborn right after Cain uh, is cursed and Abel died. Seth, we hear, is he had a son Enos, and this is when, when men and women of God started calling upon the name of the Lord. Okay? Cain, so there were two lineages, two dynasties, two, two, two sets of families in, on earth. One was Cain, the other one was uh, from Seth. One called on the name of the Lord, or at least that was the idea, and the other not. Now, here is where we get the family of Terah, and this is this one family and this one family is supposed to go and be a blessing to others and go out to Canaan and preserve the knowledge of the true God, preserve the, the knowledge of, 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 their, of the God of heaven. But then, not only they stop from going to the promised land, but there's something else happens. Do you notice what happens? The firstborn, Abram, marries a woman who is barren, and she has... No child, no children. And so it's a dead end. Do you realize that? It's an impossible situation. There is no way out, and the knowledge of God, of the true God, is done. It, it, it has hit a dead end. There's no way out. And so the call of God appears. Out of an, an impossible situation, and God says, Abraham, the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family and from your father. I'm reading from uh, chapter 12, verse 1. From your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing to everybody else. So the call of God, so n notice this, and, 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 and this is true, like even this Terah and, and his family served other gods. And we know this because later when Joshua starts his speech in Joshua 24, verse 1 and 2, Joshua starts his speech after they've crossed the Jordan, when they are, after they left Egypt, after they, when, when they are ready to go into the promised land, Joshua has a speech and he says, hey, remember where you've come from. Long ago, Abraham and Terah, his father, and all his family, they lived on the other side of the river, the Euphrates River, and they served other gods. They were idolaters. They were not faithful. And Abraham himself was not faithful. And we know this. You know, you, you, if, if, I don't know if you had gotten a chance, if your curiosity has sparked to read that Abraham, the man of faith, the father of faith, it, it, he made a lot of mistakes throughout his life. But as you know, he learned throughout and, and through that quest of faith, through that journey of faith, God led him through when God was faithful with him and Abraham was faithful to God. And so Abraham co comes, um, the call of God comes to Abraham. Even though he dwelt to an unfaithful family, 
to a family that w worshipped other gods and says, Abraham, I want you to come out. Get out. And it is necessary. See, the call of God is necessary. Without the call of God, nothing happens in, can happen in our lives. If you are here today in church and you're listening to the words of Scripture, it is because God has called you to be here. It, bec is it is because God calls you. It is not out of your own will, your own vol volition that you decided to show up here like, yeah, I'm a good guy. You know, I came and, you know, grandma brought me, mom brought me, you know, dad, you know. No. The Holy Spirit is the one who appeals to you and has brought you and has made everything happen for you to be here. There is, because there's no hope, no knowledge of God. There's no kids. There's nothing in Sarah's life, in Abraham's life. And so... The call of God is necessary. And think about it, parents. See, I, if I, wouldn't, if I w weren't a Christian, I would still be a nice guy, relatively nice guy, I think, because my parents are kind of nice. And, you know, I probably sh wouldn't be a mean person, but I wouldn't know God. Do you see the difference? And that's the same way with you. It's not necessarily about being nice or being good. It is about the call of God that comes to you and shakens you and, and disturbs you and, 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 and calls you out personally. It's necessarily and it's personal. See, Seth, the family, the godly family, the lineage of Seth, Enos, all those good guys, all the g and Cain, wicked people over here. But no. See, Abraham, from the good family, the good family that's supposed to preserve the, the knowledge of God, what happens? They worship all the gods. So the call of God has to be personal. And so that's why parents, grandparents, you must pray and do everything in your, in your ability to make sure that your kids learn how to call upon the name of the Lord. Amen? And so, and, and, and so that is why Without the call of God, we are spiritually asleep. We're spiritually dead. It has to disturb us. It has to call us. It has to appeal to us. The call of God is also gracious because Abraham is an idolater. His family is, is too. He's not faithful. But what qualifies Abraham to be the father of many nations? Think about this. What qualified Abraham to be the father of many nations? Oh, well, Abraham was, was, was this, Abraham was a good guy, he was willing, he was this. He was. No. It, what qualified, and haven't we said this so many times? What qualified Abraham was the call of God. We could title this sermon, The Qualifying Call of God. You are not called because you are qualified. You are qualified because you've been called to do something by God. And so that is why it is by grace that we've been called. The call of God is, is, is so powerful that you have to have it in your life or your life is a dead end, no matter how nice a person you are. Your life, you will live for yourself. You will live for others to please others. You will live to please the people around you, you will succumb to the culture around you. There's none of that like, oh, I'm going to find my own path. No, you're just f adopting the path th th that is immediately around you. And so, it'll. But, but here's the hope. It'll transform you no matter how bad a person you are. Amen? The call of God will transform you no matter what bad a person you are. So, there it is. Abraham in a dead end. The work of God has come to a dead end, but then everything changes because of the call of God. It is personally radical. See, if you, um, you, you uh, heard scripture reading from the King James Version, and uh, th the reason the King James Version gives, a, it gives a, an, an interesting wording to this, it says, can you, can you read uh, verse 1 for us out loud, 12-1? Uh, Genesis 12, 1. Okay. 
Okay. Sometimes I wonder why the King James uh, reads that uh, reads funny like that. Get yourself out. Do you know why it says that? You know, I'm not a a, a, a fan of I'm not a King James only person but type of preacher, but there are things that the King James version gets right, and this is this is one of them. Get yourself out. Can it be more specific? You need to get out. Get yourself personal. I don't care. God says, who's your dad? He could be an elder. He could be a pastor. You need to get out. Get out of your land. Get out. Get yourself out. And so it's not enough to be part of a Christian country. See, so many times I hear people talk about politics and, 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 and we are a Christian nation. But they themselves don't seem to be Christian. They don't may not attend church. They're not you don't you don't see Christian fruit in their lives. See, it's not enough to be part of a Christian family. It's not enough to be part of a Christian environment. You yourself have to make accept, receive the call of God. And so it's not enough to be that your mom, that your dad, uh, many times in, in the Hispanic culture we trust a lot on our moms to be the spiritual ones. I don't know. Usually traditional cultures rely on that. Uh, so those of you who are Hispanic here, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. There go, they go out, you know, drinking, partying, but mom, pray for me that I return safe, you know. And mom says, yes, my son, I will, you know, no problem. And you see Adventist moms do the same thing, you know. And they say, mamita la bendición, mom, the blessing, mom, the blessing. And they get out and they do whatever they want, but they trust that their faith, the faith of their moms, it's borrowed and it's going to do them. You know, mom, pray for me. I'm going to a job interview. Mom, pray for me. I'm going to do this. Mom, it doesn't, do, sure, mom, God will hear mom's prayers. But it, 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 the, the, the call of God is get yourself out of this place, of this culture, of this thing. You need to be called out. You need to leave whatever idols you are in, whatever part of the culture you're in. And so uh, it has to penetrate you as an individual. And if it hasn't, you're not a Christian. You, you're not a Christian. And so also the, 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 the call of God involves your will. So it involves the surrender of your will. Notice what, it's, what uh, verse, t uh, gen uh, I'm sorry, Hebrews 11 verse 8 says, uh, at the end, it says, and he went out. This is uh, the author of Hebrews concluding. He went out not knowing where he was going. He didn't know where he was going. How many of us, how many times wh when, when, you're, uh, when I've been giving Bible studies, people say, well, well, if I become a Christian, does that mean that I have to break up with my, my boyfriend? Does that mean that I have to break up with my girlfriend? Does that mean that, that we have to stop living together and get married? Does that mean that we have to do this, that we have to do that? Does that mean that I have to quit my job? And for a while I used to say, well, this is, yeah, this is what you should do, this, 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 this. And I would just kind of venture into prescribing what they should do in their lives. But see, I don't want to do that. Because it is the call of God that, that has to prescribe personally to you through the word of God, through what you discern is the call of God and do it. And you have to be honest. And so the, 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 uh, you have to surrender your will to the truth of God. And it's not uh, thus saith the pastor, thus saith the church, but it is you surrendering to the word, to the word of God. And so it is. It is. It, it involves your will, your surrendering of your will. And so Abraham goes out, not knowing. He didn't go. We don't have a record of him questioning God and says, "Hey, where are you taking me? Can you tell me first? Like, show me a map at least. At least the area is it like beyond the river, before the river? Do I have to cross? Do I not? Like, what happens if the Egyptians come up to me? What happens if like you know all these, all the the the." Um, the, the king of Sodom and, 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 and these other people, you know, what will happen? Like, this is a scary thing, God. You need to tell me. I need your assurance. I need all this stuff. I need to know for sure. But there's, there's none of that. We read that Abraham went out not knowing, not needing to know where he was going. 
not needing to know. And so, my friends, if you receive the call of God, see, and, and can I can I do something? Mention something here. When we are we are in, in, in nominating committee season, <laughs> many of you will be asked and have been asked to serve. Will will this? And, and, and sure, you can put a lot of conditions to the, and, and it's okay if you, 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 you say, well, I need to be trained, I need to do this, and people should do this. Sure, we can do the best as possible to, for those things to fall in place. But the call of God is coming to you. And I pray that you will humbly receive that call if you discern this being the will of God. So that, y- so that you, can, you can serve the Lord, you can l- surrender your will. See, it's not, it's not a, it, it involves, think, think about this. The call of God came to Abraham, and it says, Abraham says, where? And God says, I'll tell you later. And then, I'll give you a son. And Abraham says, but how will that happen? I'm like old. Trust me, I'll tell you later. And then, God says, sacrifice your son to me. Go up to the mountain. And then God says, Abraham says, why? And God says, just trust me. I'll tell you later. Three religions and and major religions in the world claim Abraham as their, the father of their faiths. And so Abraham became a pretty big deal because he trusted the Lord. He considered him faithful. And so that is Christianity, my friends, is get out not knowing where you're going to end up, what you surrendering your will. Where? I'll show you. Give you a son. How? I'm old. I'll show you. And so one thing that I, 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 uh, I misplaced, I said, I, I in a previous message, I said that Abraham and Sarah had were a young couple at some point, but they weren't. And in, in, in ver- chapter 11 of Genesis just really um, disputes what I had said. They were already old. They were 75 years old when they left, and Sarah was barren, like clearly barren. Like she was really, she, she was past the, the age of childbearing. And so... Um, and so what the promise of God is, is, is incredible that comes to, to, to Abraham. And so the, the call of God involves, it's like, it's not just an adventure that you, you, you're going to go and you're going to come back. It's more like a quest. In other words, when you go on a quest, it's like you're going, finding something, finding a dream. But when you may not even come back from the quest. You may not even, and if you come back, you come back transformed from it. So how is it, don't ask, does this call fit my agenda? Does Christianity is a whole new agenda? Or how will this religion, how does going to church will enrich my life? The call of God is an entire different life. It's a new life. It's not adding to your old life. It's new wineskins, as Jesus called it. So you, we can't say to God, I'll obey if, if you say that to God, Lord, I will do this. Let's do this covenant. I, if, if you do this, I'll do that. If you do this, then maybe you are not a Christian. You haven't surrendered your will. You're still on the driver's seat. You're still in control. You're still on the throne. You haven't gotten yourself out. You see what I mean? You're still on the throne. God is not on the throne. Jesus is not the king of your life. You're still on it, and you don't want to let go of that steering wheel. I want to go. And so now, and my last point here is that God, the, 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 the call of God has to do with mission. Is a mission. I get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your culture. Get out so that you may be a blessing to others. Some people think this is imperative, get out and be a blessing, imperative, or as a consequence, as, a, as an inevitable result of the call of God. I think it's both. Um, it is an inevitable result of receiving the call of God, but it is also a, it is a, 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 a command that we, we get. We receive the blessing so that we can be 
a blessing to others. And Abraham and Sarah certainly were. And so what I want you to um, think, I, 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 as some of you know, um, I want to relate to you something that, that is happening to our family right now has happened, um, just like the man family. Um, Amy's, Amy's grandmother uh, passed away. And so, um, but I want you to, th th let me tell you a little bit of that, that, the story of their family. When I was getting to know Amy, um, I, I was trying to trace back, you know, how, 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 how Adventist, how Christian this, this young lady was. <laughs> and so I asked her, you know, it's like, hey, how did, how did, how did the message came to your family? And so she started, you know, relating with mom and dad and this and this and that. And then she told me about grandma. And how her, I think it was, we're not sure. We, we'll go, we need to go back to Canada and, 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 and make sure we, we read the, the, the book that Grandma wrote for her with the family stories. It, it could have been um, her grandma's dad or grandma's grandpa. Where he found out he came from uh, Romania. Was it Romania, maybe, or Russia? And they found out, um, they started learning about the Bible, and somehow they stumble into the Sabbath, and they met somebody else, and so they started a little church in the town they lived at in Canada, somewhere out there in the prairies. So as they, now there comes Grandma, right? Mary, I met her, a very sweet lady. Um, then comes Darlene, you know Darlene, my, my mother-in-law. Now, Darlene, one of the first things <laughs> when I went to visit uh, Grandma and I met Grandma, uh, Darlene was sitting next to her and uh, we were eating and she told me at least three times, you know, she was, she was getting a little old, but she was like, oh, Danny, it was so hard raising this one. <laughs> and, you know, Darlene was kind of embarrassed. It was so hard raising this one. Man, it was so hard. And, and uh, you know, and... and, and and yeah, then I, you know, I knew that Darlene had, when she, uh, you know, was old enough, she left home and she didn't come back, and uh, she was tired of uh, a, a legalistic church in her in her town, and she was done. She was done with church, done with God, done with everything. Um, then uh, she met Dennis, uh, right here, my father-in-law. Um, sometime later, they got married. And uh, about maybe 10, 12 years later, they somehow they returned to church, some evangelistic series. Uh, Dennis wa was baptized. Um, and um, then, you know, I get Amy. All right. So now, but listen to this. <laughs> listen to the call of God and how it's so powerful and it's life changing. Darlene has spent the last probably three, four weeks taking care of her mother. Uh, you know what that's like. Some of you know what that's like, taking care of somebody in her last days, you know, long, long, long nights, uh, very little sleep, uh, you know, just not eating very well and very tired. And in that, just such a difficult struggle, grandma in her last, you know, just, just breathing hard and just uh, really bad in her health, she asked, I wish I would be sure that I would go to heaven. I wish I would be sure that I go to heaven. And at that age, in those times, everything, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters in those difficult. I, the fear of God just hits you and nothing else matters. And you say, well, how can I be sure? And Darlene says, well, mom, do you believe in Jesus? She said, yes. Do you believe that he died for your sins and rose again? Yes. Is there anything that you can add to what he did for you that you can contribute to your salvation? She thought about it. No. Then, Mom, you can be sure that you'll go to heaven. And then, Grandma... Um, was able to sleep and be in peace. And a few days later, she passed away. So the simplest of gospel presentations to Grandma Mary 
was given by her rebellious daughter, once rebellious daughter. Think about that. How does God work? You know, it's it just the work of God is amazing and the call of God is his spirit moving. So don't ever give up hope. Don't ever stop praying for your children. Don't ever stop, and children, don't ever stop praying for your parents. The call of God is powerful. It transforms you. It's missional. I, I, I would have not met that Jamaican man if, if, if Lori and Sandy wouldn't have taken the call. And so, what is that to you? The call, it comes from Jesus. The one who took the, he took the big call. He accepted the big call. He said, I will go to earth. I will leave everything, this throne, the glory, the angels, everything. I would, I would just step out empty of myself and become one of them so that they can be with me. He's the, he's the one. You can receive that call, my friends. You can receive that call because he received it first. Because he did it first. He went out for you so that we can go out for him. And that call is a loving, amazing God, God who is all mercy, who, who, you know, and I just think of Sarah. I can't stop thinking about Sarah and his, the, the, her story. Just Sarah was frustrated, self, you know, hating herself and just with so much, I mean, not being able to bear a child in those days, it was horrible. And so in that horrible situation, even, even when, when, when after they have Ishmael, remember that? Ver, uh, chapter 17 of Genesis, they have Ishmael. They, they try to fix things on their own. And so the call of God comes again to Abraham. Abraham, I'll make you a great nation. No, 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 no. You know, the, the same promise confirmed. And then so Abraham says, but, <laughs> and he laughs too. Not just Sarah. Abraham laughs as well. And he says, God, how can I have this? How, how I'm already 100 years old. He says, no, out of you, I'm going to get a son. And it'll, in a, and of you and Sarah, not you and somebody else, you and Sarah. I'm going to do a miracle in your life. And so I, wanted, I, wanna talk, I, I, want, I want you to listen to the call of God right now. And you say, well, God is not coming to me like the, he would come to, um, to Abraham. Well, Peter puts that into perspective and says, well, you know, I heard the voice in the mountain when he, in the mountain transfiguration, but you have a better voice, Peter says. It is the word of God. It's been written. These promises are for you. And so, my friends, don't think that because you're not listening to God audibly, this doesn't have any appeal. This has nothing to do with you. The call of God comes to you. It comes to all of us. And it is confirmed. For those of you who have received it, it is confirmed with you today. And it is, it is up to you to embrace it again and to embrace every aspect of it, including the missional one. But what about you who have not received the call of God? And so I pray that today you will receive that call. If you can't see Jesus, ask, Lord, let me see. Let me see you. I want to, I want to receive that personal. Speak to me. I want to hear that radical call, that personal call from you. And you have to look at Jesus because he is the one that took that major call and came to this earth for you and me. Amen.